I haven't posted much videos lately, mostly because I haven't done much in, during the summer, which is not entirely true. So this video is a, going to be an update on what I've been doing and also to show you one thing that I was working on. And that is this wireless uh, remote and receiver for model trains or garden trains. And in this one I wanted to do two things. I, I wanted to see if I can build uh, a transmitter and the, and the receiver which would be cheaper than the usual RC transmitters and receivers for two reasons well first I was interested in wireless communication and in this particular one in this particular application I'm using the NRF24 LO1 uh, wireless chips which communicate, uh, communicate in 2.4 gigahertz and I heard very good things about it, how easy it is to use and how reliable they are. So I wanted to see if I can build something like that and also use some of the things that I have learned in the past couple of weeks. For example, the sound chip that I used in the past, the motor controller, OLED display and, and you know, rotary encoders and some of the other stuff. So we will see if it is actually if it will become cheaper than the uh, the commercially available ones. And of course when I mean commercially available, I usually, um, most of the things that you can see is the uh, aircraft type stick controllers, but there are a couple of products uh, which are specifically designed for trains. And when we talk about trains, the reason they are so different from cars and 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 airplanes because we already really need one channel which is the you know the motor going back and forth and uh, all the other channels are mostly auxiliary like uh, turning on a sound turning on some lights so they are not really fit for the sort of like the aircraft or the automotive purpose that most of the RC units are designed for this is a very early prototype where we say this is more like a proof of concept just to make sure that I can build this uh, from kits that are readily available on eBay and the usual Chinese sources and well just to make sure that I can you know code it and it and it works uh, but still there is a lot to do for example the power supply part is not uh, really thought through so this is why I have two power banks running each of them that was just the easiest way, just to plug it into the uh, USB port of the Arduino and the power it from 5 volts. But I would say that most of the other things are final. And the way I wanted to design this, that I wanted to use readily available parts. So even in the final design I wouldn't create my own PCB, but I would just buy an Arduino Nano, an OLED display, a rotary encoder, the NRF chip as it is um, in the current form the sound chip and then just have one board which integrates all of them and of course that means that that's not going to be as small as the commercially available units but because i'm aiming for g scale i don't think that's really an issue hopefully you agree that for a controller the size doesn't really matter as as long as it can fit in the hand comfortably and for the receiver well i have a Merklin, you know two axle uh, wagon here that's how big the receiver is at the moment. So the way I program the control at the moment is that it has a rotary encoder so that's the kind of well it's not a pot it's something that you can turn unlimited number of times and it has a click each time it uh, switches positions and you can also press it. So it uses the same sort of control that I have in my Merklin digital controller as in you turn it clockwise and the uh, local accelerates you turn it uh, anti-clockwise the local brakes and if you press then you can uh, change the direction and again the way I've implemented it there's only 20 uh, speed steps so this controller sends a speed value from 0 to 20 and the receiver assigns a minimum and a maximum speed to speed let's say 1 and speed 20 and in between any of these speed steps it automatically accelerates and decelerates based on the values that are written in the code and again my idea was that because they are uh, these are made from fairly cheap components I would have a controller which is permanently bind to one receiver so that will be one controller for each locomotive so again to control the local you turn the knob uh, clockwise you break uh, for, uh, for, uh, to break you turn it anti-clockwise and you push uh, 
to change the direction and when you change the direction automatically zeroes the speed so that's like a like a hard break if you want a hard stop and I've also added this keypad and that keypad would be used to control lights which I haven't implemented yet and also trigger some sounds and I happen to have this 4x4 keyboard I think it's a little bit big so maybe I should in a final version I would buy like a 3x4 so I wouldn't have the ABCD keys on the left but that's pretty much it on the receiver side the setup is equally simple Again, I have a micro microcontroller which is controlling all the electronics, the NRF radio chip, a, a JQ6500, uh, so that's the sound module. It's a very simple but very cheap device and basically it has a built-in, I think it's a one megabyte flash. So it can store about, is, is that about 20 seconds of uh, sound um, split into multiple files and then Basically, this Arduino tells this unit which sound file to play. So that will store sounds like uh, horns, station announcements, and well, anything like that. The only thing I can't do with this one is I can't create uh, a continuous uh, sound because every time, if I want to loop something, I can just you know loop the same sound or you just uh, change to another sound, just like it happens with uh, commercially available sound units. But with this unit, whenever you change between two sounds, there is like a, like a half a second gap. And it's just too much. It just, it's too annoying. It's not, not good enough to change between, you know, like an idle sound and the, um, uh, the engine revving up sound and then a, like a, you know, a notch one sound. So I won't be able to do that, but I, I'm quite happy just to have the sound uh, effects and that should be all and also i have a crappy speaker so that doesn't really sound good i just happen to have that in my junk drawer and that's the motor controller which is rated for i think uh what is it 5 amps and 24 volts or something like that or 35 volts so it should be you know plenty for this application and at the moment the electronics are running from this power bank and the motor is actually running from this uh, 12 volt let us see battery so the full speed is way less than the actual full speed what this uh, aristocraft uh, unit can produce which i think it should run like 20 volts maximum or something like that but anyway that's not the final setup again i just happen to have this let us see battery uh, in a final version that will be um, something like a lipo so let me give, give you a quick demo how it looks so i'm going to press because by default it goes backwards so I press to change the direction and if I turn the knob there she goes she accelerates and I set the acceleration to quite low so it takes a bit of a time to ramp up and now I'm slowing it down of course you can't see that now and I stopped it press the button turn it again and then she comes back and at the moment, the OLED display is not really showing much. Um, it's more showing information for me so I can see what is really going on. And that's how it looks like when I press the direction button and it comes to uh, stop immediately. So, oh yeah, and then a couple of buttons. As I said, the sound is not really impressive with the small speakers. And just to give you an idea of the cost of the components that are used in this transmitter. So I have a cheap Arduino Nano from, from a Chinese eBay, so it's not the genuine one. I have a rotary encoder, I have an OLED display, I have uh, well some sort of keyboard, I'm just going to list something which is quite generic. And then I have the NRF24 L01 plus i think it's a plus chip i don't think it really matters and right underneath i have just one more chip this one here which provides regulated power uh, for the nrf radio chip because these are really sensitive to unstable power supply so they tend to um, restart if the power supply is not good so this uh, small board is providing a stable power supply for this chip and so far it seems to be working fine so these are all the components. I would need to have some sort of components for, for the power supply. So instead of having this big um, USB power bank, but actually because the 
uh, the Arduino Nano provides the power for all the other stuff. Maybe it's, it's just easier because uh, USB power banks are so readily available. So just have one and then plug it in and and then there she goes, just like it does here. And on the receiver part, again, I have the same Arduino Nano, the same NRF chip. In this particular instance, I don't have that daughter board. I have a small cap soldered onto the ground and the VCC pins that might not be required, might be required. I just put it there for testing. I have the JQ5 6500 sound chip and the motor controller. And I also have a connection for the OLED display, which I used in the beginning just to make sure that the code is running, the data is transferred correctly between the two units. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, you need a speaker, and uh, but that's all. As I said, this is a proof of concept at the moment. What I'm planning to do in the longer term is obviously finish this. Uh, I would say that the transmitter is more or less finished, uh, with the exception of the power supply part. The, the receiver is also in a really, really good shape. I just need to have some extra circuitry to control lights, uh, which I definitely want to do. And, and yeah, and that's, that's pretty much it. Of course, uh, the transmitter would need to have a nice 3D printed case. And, well, the engine needs to be an engine because at the moment this is more like a test trick, but, oh, damn plane, sorry about that. So on the long run, I'm planning to test my 3D design skills and um, make an, like a freelance engine and then use my 3D printer to print the chassis and then probably use this motor block. So that would be the final housing of uh, this receiver unit. Once this is all ready, I would obviously have a more detailed video on the whole build and the code. And of course the code is going to be on, on GitHub for you to download if you wish to you know, replicate this project or do something really similar to this one. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.